Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Old Boys Podcast. Um, we are a film podcast in which we are we, we watch Netflix films or whatever film, and we just we, we get on here and we talk about it, we break it down, we analyze it. I have a master's degree. If you case in case you have forgotten about, wow, that. bragging, um, <clears throat> I okay. know, right? But before <laughs> we do that today, because this film is heavy as fuck, um, <laughs> and it's going to bring us both down pretty far. And be very, mm. very sad boys. So we want to be happy mm. boys and listen to Jared complain about something for a little bit. <laughs> so if yeah. we could give Jared the floor for five minutes, maybe we yep. can get, gather some insight into the wonderful world that is just just Earth. I feel like oh. we're going to learn a lot about society Welcome right to now. Earth. <laughs> Welcome so, to Earth. So uh, I am d- named Jared. I know I just spoke like I was an alien. I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm having one of those days. That's Dan. Hi, way, how are you? Rambling on about you? how smart and attractive he is. And uh, <laughs> so, okay, I woke up today, right? Wow, I did too. I can't right? wait for this story to get better. Dan, what do you normally do when you wake up during your routine? What's Go like to the fucking first work. Thing you do? Oh, um, no, no, no. Like when you're getting ready. Whenever I'm getting ready, I wake up, go out, and then rub my eyes for a good five minutes, and then make my lunch. <laughs> You go outside and run. No, your eyes no, no, for no, no, no. I go out of the room and just like, okay, I'm fucking awake now, and I have to like say that to myself five million times before mm. I'm like, okay, I can do things. Well, I think my routine's a little similar, Dan. I Except like you to shit. Go take a big old shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's what I always do. I wake up and take a big old shit, and then if we're doing the podcast, I usually take a big old shit and then uh i i go and we do the, the podcast because there's time differences and i also oh yeah guys jared jared wakes up um like right now and i get off of work like right now that's, yes that's, that's yeah, kind of a weird. fun thing that we do <laughs> usually yeah usually i just wake up to the podcast and dan's been awake for just hours years <laughs> oh but uh <laughs> a millennia well okay you know Sometimes I even do two poops, you know. So what you're, yeah, poop, yeah, yeah. The, of course, the double shit. We we yeah. lest we forget. Yeah, lest we forget the dreaded double shit. And um, so I went and and I'm just in a groggy haze. Took my big old dump, and I go to flush the toilet. It, it kind of sounds a little weird, and I'm oh, like, Oh no, that's weird. I don't know. And then I go and try to wash my hands. No water. Oh All no! Out. Oh no! That's happened to me before. So like now there's a fucking shit in your toilet that won't go away. <laughs> yep. And I can't wash my dirty shit hands. Oh. I'm reporting this. I'm doing this cod- podcast. Podcast. Co- what the fuck? <laughs> I got shit in my mouth. I'm doing this podcast, Dan, <laughs> with dirty shit hands. Well, at least you don't have to shake my hand today. I'm very upset. Oh, I get and- that. I live in a a, um, a condo, and they have HOA and shit, so they just kind of do whatever they want. And you would think they would tell you when they're going to, like, in advance, when they're going to turn the fucking they should. water off. This is the third time they've <clears throat> done this to us in a year wow. of them just turning the fucking water off, and I have no idea when it's coming back. I don't know. And when you call them, they're just like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Call the water company. And you call the water company, and they're like, yeah, your HOA just – they." The people who own that condo or whatever, they just shut the water off. We don't know. They didn't tell us. They're like, hopefully it'll be back on soon. <laughs> just like the water company doesn't know. So I guess that... there's, one, there's one valve that connects to all of the other uh, condos to where the water goes. And I get, they can just shut that fucking thing off. Right. <sighs> so is that the only so thing I'm you need to complain to about? View a movie. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Because I'm not ready yet. Because <laughs> here's, here's, here's the shit that I have to deal with. God damn it. Um, Listeners, regular listeners of the show will remember two episodes ago, two weeks ago, where, um, let me rephrase it. Let me me start from the beginning. I believe Danny's dad was fucking Danny's mom, like, hard. My dad was fucking my mom pretty hard. And then I came out. And then (laughs) I grew up to be 28, almost 29 years old. Oh. Like, very cl- very soon. By the time this episode drops, I will have been 29 years old for a couple days. <laughs> so, I have come to the conclusion that God has reached a point where he has a vendetta against my apartment complex. <laughs> if he exists. 
<clears throat> um, knock on wood, please don't kill me because, you know, mm-hmm. you are all powerful if what I'm mm-hmm. saying is true. But listeners of the show, regular listeners, will remember two weeks ago when um, just the heavens opened up and a strike of lightning and subsequent thunder shook my apartment building to the fucking core. Oh, yeah. That's been happening once a week, maybe mm-hmm. twice a week. Just mm-hmm. like hits right next to our apartment complex, knock shit off of my walls. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it's been doing that since that one day um, of the show. And it had done that. Um, it had, so it's done that six times in the last two weeks. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> knock stuff off the walls? N- not knock things off the walls every time. It did once, but like shake it to where like you can feel the whole uh, building rumble. Mm-hmm. It's just a fucking thing of thunder. It's insane. Like, okay, so thunder. there's, there's, yeah. Well, no more thunder jokes. I know we did a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, not <laughs> yet, but time. soon. Oh, never mind. That joke's just, mm-hmm. just, just whatever. Hey, Jared. Mm-hmm. Um, did you watch? Hello. A film? Did you watch a film? Yeah, uh, we watched Enemy. Who assigned Enemy? By the way, I assigned Enemy, and I don't want to call Enemy a film. I want to call Enemy. A period of flickering existential dread. Because <laughs> I have a really great film to assign after this, and I was hoping it was my so, turn to assign it. You know, it most certainly is your turn to assign it. But, Jared, can you give me, very briefly, your first impressions of the film that I wanted us to watch? Um, I will, but uh, uh, tell us what the film is about really quick. Oh, so. you're right. It's my turn. Okay, so the film is about old Jakey G. He's um, he's a history professor <laughs> at some Jake fucking Hall. stupid college in Canada, uh-huh. and um, he's why he, he, okay he's nihilistic. He's white. Yeah, he's white. <laughs> he's totally white. He's nihilistic, kind of, and he talks about he's a history professor, so he talks about like control and Hegel and all this other shit. And one day he's in a faculty lounge, and this guy's like, "You like movies?" And he's like, no, like, no, I don't get out much. Leave me alone. <laughs> Can't you see that I'm very standoffish? And the guy's like, well, just in case you wanted to see one, my recommendation is some weird fucking stupid indie title. That's... Gone with the Winds or no, something. It's, it's real. It's, it has a stereotypical indie title name. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's, that's what, what it is. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, okay, I'll have to check it out. And it's like some it's, – it's, it's an independent feature from – you know, um, Ontario. So the film is set in Ontario. So he goes home and reluctantly on the way home, kind of goes in to the video store, sees what it's all about. He gets it. And as he's watching it, he's like, Oh, that was a good movie. He rewinds it because something's bothering about it. He can't quite pick. He can't quite quite. He can't quite place (laughs) what It is that bothers him about it, but he goes back and he reminds it and he sees one of the extras, a bellhop in this movie, looks exactly like him. He's like, what the fuck? So he Mm -hmm. does all this research on him and he finds out that he lives very close by and starts to um, just call him, say, hey, uh, uh, we look the same. Do you want to meet up? And then shit hits the fan from there. Yes. Because guess yes. what? Eventually that guy does want to meet up and he's super aggressive. Super Oh yeah. Aggressive. So that's that is the kicker, like the starter, I guess, of the film. Yeah. I don't um, want to get into everything. Yes, but that's exactly. basically what like that's what sets you in this downward spiral. Because once mm-hmm. that happens, you still have about an hour and ten limit uh, an hour and ten lemons. Um, you have an hour and ten minutes worth of movie left, and you're like, all right, this is fucking crazy. And then right about ten minutes after that, you're like, I don't want this movie to end ever because I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid that if this whole movie ends, then my life's going to be over. It could be. could very well be. So uh, I thought this movie was pretty good. I mean, it's not the best movie I've ever seen. Uh, I was enjoying it for a while and, but I, it kind of got to the point where I just, I didn't understand what anyone's motivation for doing anything was. And I, I guess we can get into like the theory of the movie. 
So do you think there there are actually two different people that look exactly the same, or is it the same person? You know what? I don't fucking know. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, my first impressions are I fucking love this movie. Okay. To death. Can I watch it? Um, can I watch it back to back to back to back? No. This film, uh-huh. this film it takes everything out of you emotionally because of ha- the, just the content of it. Like there's, there's so much both explicitly given to you and implicitly given to you. Like um, this film very strangely without saying it does deals with marital rape, uh-huh. which is pretty like, it's a really fucking intense thing to talk about. Right. Um, but what was your initial question? I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> no, I do you fun. think do you think that the two doubles in this movie played by Jake Gyllenhaal, one is the teacher, one is the actor, are they separate people? Are they one person? Were they one person that split into sep- you know, like different people? Okay, What's so you have to suspend your disbelief if you want to think about it that way. Um, I don't really want to know. I feel like the film is very well done in terms of its ambiguity. Uh-huh. So I don't necessarily want to imagine them as either or. I just want them to kind of both exist as a tension, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't really care to answer your question. Rude. Well, I mean, no, no, <laughs> let me rephrase that. <laughs> to answer your question, I don't really care if they are or not. Yeah, I, I you don't think it matters that much. No. Okay. Um. So I read, I didn't read, but I, I looked through the cliff notes of the book that this is based off of. The double. Now this is uh, the double is also another book by a different author, and we had already yes. watched that one too with uh, what's his face Jesse Eisenberg. Yes, which is funny that there's a double of the double. Whoa. Made by someone else completely different. Here's a question. Which W do you like better? Oh, my God, man. I think I like uh, Scar- the Scaramango, Scaramago, Ma- uh, Jose, Jose's novel. <laughs> I can't say it's last So name. the one that we just watched. We, we prefer yes. Enemy better. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I like his, uh, his deal of, of – well, his story is similar to this movie but also much different because in the story, from what I'm understanding – there are actually two people. Right. These are two different people. And the idea is having someone who is exactly like you takes away your identity and like your the person you are. So the enemy of the movie or whatever would be one must kill the other to reclaim that person's sense of perf- purpose and identity. Right. Right. But the film enemy isn't really about that. It's more about infidelity. I would think it's it's more about like him cheating on his lo- his wife and living a double life, and also big ass fucking spiders. Oh my god! <laughs> like a lot of spiders doing like kinky, weird, sexy stuff. Okay, maybe. so god damn it, man. <sighs> and I I, I think I kind of like the novel's interpretation of the double more because I believe in the film now. I really had to be helped with this theory because when I watched this film, I had no fucking idea what was going on. The only thing I could say to you is that I had figured out is like maybe they're the same person. Um, but then that kept getting thrown out because there's there's certain things that just don't make any sense unless some like certain scenes are just not real. Like none of those scenes actually happened and they happened in the other double's head. That'd be the only way to explain it. Um, so, like in the film, I I believe it's one person, and then in the mo- or uh, in the book, I think it's supposed to be two different people. So uh, it's well, a different way to. And this isn't hundred percent. I mean, anybody now, can think okay, whatever so, they want. I've read so it many here, different here's, theories. Here's here's what here's what Jared is struggling with um, listening on. If you've not seen the film, I recommend you go see it. But if you have yet to see it, what the issue is. Is towards the end of the the, the movie, um, they kind of swap lives 
at the at the forcing hand of like the evil one essentially. And now, was that done through blackmail? Because I didn't understand why he well, went we're, along we're, with we're it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. All right. And um, eventually, basically, the evil one is so you know rambunctious and just so flippant and um, mm-hmm. flippant is probably not the right word to use. But he's so such a go getter. He knows exactly what he wants. He also has anger issues, and the other one, his his, God. Basically, he ends up dying, and at that point, it's very easy for the the good one to take over his life. If that makes sense, I don't like how you keep saying evil and good though. You just I would have them as the teacher, who's the like teacher, the shy. Well, one. okay, well, the, okay. So the aggressive one and the non-aggressive one. The, All so right, the aggressive I guess. and passive. Because okay, you cannot tell me that the other one is not super aggressive. As soon as he figures out that they look the same, he's like, "Oh fuck, I'm gonna abuse the shit out of this power I have." <laughs> and it's just, it's just, it's night and day because the aggressive one, he starts off like a normal dude. He's like, you know, pretty. He's outgoing, but he's like, he's fairly normal. You but don't the think minute, the passive one is abusing his power of having a double. He definitely does that, dude. Well, yeah, but not... He goes into the other guy's work and pretends to be him. But not to the degree that the aggressive one, like, he's like, he just fucking takes it and floors that shit. Whereas the passive Uh, one, he's like, I'm I'm gonna dip my my foot in the water a little bit. And then the the aggressive one, like, unzips his pants and sticks his dick at the (laughs) bottom of the deep end. He's like, I'm here now. What are you gonna do? Gross. I'm just letting you know. This is my interpretation, okay? Hey, Jared, uh, I think it's okay that we both have different opinions, and I think we Dan, should talk about them. What? You're wrong. <laughs> For those of you guys who don't know, um, <laughs> we, we really haven't brought this up until now, but the double was actually written about me and Jared because we, yeah. we, we look exactly like Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> we do ex- look exactly like Jake Gyllenhaal, and Jake Gyllenhaal is... An actual manifestation of Jose Sar- <laughs> Saramago's beautiful adaptation of the double. So that's right. That's right. I'm assuming you were done talking points, right? Sure. Yeah, you want to kind of go wanna through? Talk about? Yeah. Myself? What do you want to talk about okay. first? Because there's, well, there's so much. Let's see here. Chaos is order yet undeciphered. Oh, yes. I guess that's a line from the book. Um, That's neat. I kind of like that. Uh, Let's get into the lives of the two boys, our best boys. So Jakey One is a history professor. He has a girlfriend that... Or it's, prostitute? Or prostitute? Yeah. It's <laughs> not very know. it's not very clear until the end where it's like a little bit more clear, but still not quite sure. So the deal with this is like he uh he talks about at his school how like the the I don't know governments or whatever or dictatorships control people through repetition and distraction. And while he's saying all of this to his students He's trying to teach chaos theory, whatever you were saying. And uh, he, he keeps going and saying the same thing in class and then coming home and then having sex with this woman and then going to sleep. And it's like the same shit keeps happening over and over and over again. And it gets confusing as to like what's really going on or if like this is all in the same day or like how much time has passed. And I guess it's supposed to show the monotony of his job and like how stuck and trapped that was I guess he feels. very well done. That was probably yeah, yeah, yeah. one of my favorite parts of the movie, where it, like that that lecture plays on repeat. Uh huh. And um, at first you're like, did he just like? Is it has it been a year since it's passed, and now he's just doing it again? No, it's we like don't know. But that's that's why I'm saying like the ambiguity of this film is like off the charts, really yeah. well done. And the woman that he is copulating with, does she ever say a word? No, she like barely Towards the says end, she does. anything. Maybe in the sh- I think she has like one line with um, the the history professor. The, his name is Adam Bell, and the other one is um, what Anthony Clare or something. Mm-hmm. I think it's Anthony Clare. But um, yeah, she barely says anything until the end of the film. 
She's yeah, more she of kind of like a doll there for yeah. him to just have sex with. And but then she there's leaves. a lot of real, yeah. The, the, like every time it, they make a point to show her leaving, yeah, like it's not good what she's doing. Like basically, there's just a very heavy implication that she is being paid to be there. Yeah, and that coupled with the other personality, which is the actor, right? Who mm. is has a has a wife. And she is six months pregnant, and he's doing his acting thing, and she's kind of very suspicious of him cheating, because I guess he has cheated before. Yeah. And you're starting to, like, marry these two ideas together of, like, well, oh, maybe, okay, like, so, this other place is so where he goes to cheat. The film also makes you think that, too, because we start – so both of the, both of the um, love interests are blonde. And yeah, you don't see their similar. faces. Yeah, you don't see their faces for a good long time. And the first one you see is pregnant. Mm-hmm. And the second one you see, you can't really see her stomach, so you don't know if she's pregnant or not. So it's like it kind of blurs the lines almost immediately. I got them confused. And a good thing that I, I'd say a point for this film is sometimes I was confused as to which Jake Gyllenhaal I was looking at. Like, I'm like, is this the actor or is this the teacher? I don't, I don't know. I'm so confused. And I think they could have played with that even more. Uh, but I, for what they did, I, I thought it was fun. And so we have this weird dynamic of these two guys kind of living their lives. And uh, like Dan said, um, the in a very awkward conversation, the teacher um, gets recommended a movie. He watches it. And now when you think about it, if, if, if these two characters are the same, that means this, this man who he works with recommended a film that he was in. Knowing that he was in it. Oh, shit. You're right. I didn't even think about that. How weird is that? And the dude is like, well, I can recommend him. Like, do you think he was, like, doing it cheekily? Like, I don't... It's so bizarre that he would... Just name tell him that watch... film? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, oh, it's a local movie. Like, he's... It's like, he's almost trying to say, hey, I know you're a teacher, but I also know you've been in movies, and I'm trying to tell you that, but he couldn't pick it up because he's completely separated from that other person. You don't go to the movies, do you? Movies? Yeah, are you a movie guy? In your free time, I mean? I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go out that much, I don't, I don't really like movies. Oh. <laughs> well, you don't have to go out to enjoy a good flick at home. That's true. I usually just rent them. Yeah. Most people don't these days, you know. What? Uh, well, that's what I do. Is there a reason why you're asking me this? No. Just because you brought it up, and I thought, you know, maybe you had a recommendation, or you saw a movie that you liked, and you wanted to tell me about it. Or... Oh well, sure. I mean, yeah. There's always, always something. I mean, I could go for something cheerful. Hmm. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's true. No, it's a movie. I, I, I saw it a little while ago, but um, I remember uh, yeah, it was. I liked it. Mm. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, that's it. Local film, if you keep it in mind. The very first thing in this movie that has nothing to do with the movie at all, and like they kind of allude to it, but apparently Anthony Clare, so the actor Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh-huh. is in charge or a high runner of um, this very wealthy men's club where like people strip finger themselves and crush yeah, spiders like tarantulas with very, very high studded heels. High heels is a thing in this movie. Yeah. They show a few of them. Yeah. Um, I but think crushing it does... spiders. Yeah. It, it does have something to do with the film. I just was not able to pick it up. Um, this is, again, like I said, I did some research on the film. I did not come to these conclusions myself. Are we talking about I the am. IMDb one that makes no sense whatsoever? No, I didn't even look at that. Okay, so I, I read other people's um, summaries of the film. This is the so, one that IMDb Okay, gives. go ahead. And I, th- I do not agree with this whatsoever. It's a terribly, le- or terribly weak argument. But okay. while, while no explanation was given for the presence of spiders, it has been analyzed by many people that they represent Adam slash Anthony's weakness to women, making him less dominant. No, that's not what it is. 
Because mm. just for me, just spiders don't correlate to that. Unless for some reason female spiders are much more dominant than male spiders, which I guess that makes sense. But I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm an idiot. All right. Well, <laughs> I uh, so I think from just reading, um, like I said, different people's opinions on what a lot of the symbolism or what the fuck's going on in this movie, that the spiders are are kind of like his fears of being in a committed relationship or uh, kind of like him running away from responsibility. Right. So like at the very end of the film, when the teacher double has taken over the life of the actor Mm -hmm. because he has, the other actor has been killed, which may or may not have happened in his head. I don't know. Um, he still has an envelope that he had found earlier of a key that leads to the warehouse where the sex parties happen that Dan had just talked about in the beginning of the film. And that character decides, oh, I'm going to go out tonight. He tells his wife. How like, would he know where it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm going to go out to this party or whatever. Or uh, like, I hope, I hope you're not doing anything because I need to go out for a while. I'm sorry. So basically, he, he, he's already he decided his, again that he's going to cheat on his wife. He told his what? I don't know. He, his, his wife? What? Are you pronouncing that I... correctly? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to say? He told his, his giant spider. spider. Yeah. <laughs> he told his giant spider. Well, <laughs> so when he, he walks back into the room, she turns into a giant spider. Okay. That, that's, that's the fucking thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am deathly afraid at one point that I'm going to walk into the room and Michelle's going to be a fucking giant spider now. Just, yeah. just in my nightmare that. because that was fucking her, horrifying. Don't cheat on your wife. She won't turn into a giant spider. And um, they also show a lot of webbing in this movie. The, the first time I noticed it and the last time, because <laughs> apparently it happens a lot, I, I, I found out that um, there are these power lines that are kind of going throughout the movie mm-hmm. or like in the, in the beginning. And I'm like, these power lines are fucking weird. I was looking at them. I didn't connect that they were spider webs. I just knew they were important. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is something. And <laughs> even when I saw all the spider imagery, I still didn't figure out that they were webs. So I think... The spiders represent his responsibility and his fear of commitment and relationships. In the beginning, there is a uh, literal sexy time woman stomping on the spider, indicating that he is cheating, I guess. He's cheating on his wife again. Because he had, he had basically said, like, hey, I cheated on you before. I'm not going to do it again. But in the very beginning of this movie, he is going to the sex club and doing the sexy time stuff. And then he's also still going to see this other woman as the teacher or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I, I, th- I think that's it. I think that's it. I do think they are the same person and that um, some of the stuff that happens in both of their lives is just made up. I don't know if the woman that he's even seeing as the teacher is even real. It's a little confusing. Uh, one thing that gets um, more hard to understand is how he gets caught cheating so um we haven't talked about like them meeting or anything we'll we'll get into that i guess but there's a point near the end of the film where the um the actor has switched places with the teacher we've already established this he's like i'm gonna i'm blackmailing you i didn't understand the blackmail but he does this and he's like i'm gonna blackmail you and i'm gonna i want to have sex with your girlfriend and you're just gonna take it and then after that you're gonna go away forever and i'll never have to see you again and um, he goes on a date with the teacher's girlfriend. And then while they're, they're like mid having sex, she realizes that this is a different person. Mm-hmm. But the way she realizes it is that she sees that his ring finger has a mark where a wedding ring would be. Mm-hmm. And she's like, whoa, what? why do you have that? Like, you're not the person I slept with, blah, blah, blah. And like freaks out. And, and I'm kind of like, how would she not notice this before? If they've been dating the whole time, well, that's unless why, they're different people. Yeah, that's why I, I believe that they are different. See, I want to believe in the Lynchian supernatural idea behind this, where it's like these are uh-huh. literally two different fucking people, like Mahal and Drive, who end up being one in the end through lesbian sex. But the I don't know how they is... are going to achieve lesbian sex as two men, but <laughs> they're going to try. When two become one. So... I think the only way to explain that for me is that all that shit was in his head and not real. And he was reliving a the, the first time maybe he cheated on his wife. 
or um so okay what's the deal with that picture so do you remember the picture kind of in the beginning of the film he's that's the one that you kind of have to it definitely is one person yes because he has so they keep doing one oh so the teacher has a picture of himself ripped and he's using it to compare himself to the guy on the website that is the actor because he looked the actor up he's like who is this guy he's like obsessing over him trying to figure out who he is because he looks just like him and um then much later in the film when the teacher goes into the actor's home while the actor is with his girlfriend having sex with her he he decides i'm gonna switch with him and i'm gonna go visit his wife and i guess sleep with her i guess i don't know to get back at him i don't know and uh, he sees a photo of him with the woman, but it is the exact same photo in the frame. So how would the teacher have that photo in his house but ripped apart? It's fucking crazy, baby. So that's what made me think, okay, they have to be the same person. This doesn't make any sense otherwise. And I, that kind of does take away some of the supernaturally stuff. It kind of just makes him... Like he's just got a fractured mind, I guess. And and when we hear the uh, the car accident on the radio, we don't actually hear the full story. He like turns it off, or somebody turns it off. So there's there's a few things where you're kind of just like I don't know, and it, it feels like the wife knows that her husband has a split personality or something. Because like near the end of the film, when they're laying in bed together, she's like, "How was how was your day at school?" And he's like, "What?" And she goes, "Oh, never mind." <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I want to hamper on the I think the ambiguity of this film is ingenious. So I, I don't necessarily want to think whether it is um I, I don't want to think it is I don't want to think that he is the same person. I don't want to think he's two separate people because well I, I I'd rather think that it's in the middle, I guess, because uh -huh. all the times where he's two separate people, and the film, like the narrative of the film, understands him as two separate people. Those were all the best parts of the movie. Oh, yeah. So sure. this film knows how to do um, atmosphere very well with the weird creepiness that is having a doppelganger. Yeah. And having the yeah. people of your life interact with said doppelganger. Mm -hmm. So let's start with. So he starts. Here's how it starts. Um, he goes to his work. He's recognized. He, so the history teacher goes to the actor's work. He is recognized, and he's like, here, I, I got this for you. And then he takes it. Right? Mm -hmm. So we were talking about it's like that. a letter, which yeah, has letter. the key to the sex party, thing, yeah. which I talked about earlier. Then he, go, he finds his address, and then he goes to that address, and then he calls the phone of the apartment. Of the actor. He's of the actor. the actor. Yeah. So the history teacher is calling the actor, and the wife of the actor picks up. And then he's like, hello? And then she thinks it's him. The actor. And then, she, yeah, she thinks it's his, his, that she thinks it's her husband, and she's getting confused, and he's just playing a game with her. Yeah. But it's actually him trying to contact the other guy. So that's kind of number one where it starts, because it, it gives the... It gives the woman like a weird, flirtatious, playful thing to go with, but then towards the end of that phone conversation, she's like... This is this is a little strange because he's mm -hmm. acting weird. And yes. then he calls back, the history teacher calls back to get the guy on the phone. And that's whenever they kind of have their first confrontation where he's like, okay, you don't need to call me back anymore. Especially because the history teacher is being like a giddy little fucking kid and can't contain himself about how excited he is to actually talk to this person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks it's like a weird fan. But he also hears this guy's voice is exactly like his. Yes. So another thing in the film is... Uh, when the doubles are meeting, they only meet by themselves. There's never a third person to witness all th uh, the two of them together. Um, there's always some time in between where they are. Like when the teacher calls mm -hmm. and, and the actor's wife picks up, he asks, like, where is he? He's like, oh, he's out. Like, he's not even at home. So they do a lot of uh, – they set it up to where it really could be. Maybe it is two people. Maybe it's – that's a coincidence. So you're not really sure if it's right. like one or two. So I, I like that aspect because later on when the wife goes to visit the teacher, cause he looks the teacher up, this could either be that the wife is realizing that my husband has a double life 
as mm-hmm. a teacher and has not t- told me at all, or that I've just found someone who looks exactly like my husband and acts exactly like my husband. Well, see, and again, him. the more I'm going to talk about this, the more I'm still going to favor the fact that it is two different people. Uh huh. Because towards the end, whenever he decides to sleep with, or the history teacher decides to sleep with the pregnant wife that's not his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before he says that. Well, first of all, she's kind of onto him. She's like, how was your day at school? Like yeah. trying to like be like, hey, I know it's you and I don't care. And then towards whenever she's about to have sex with him, she's like, I want you to stay. Like almost implying that I know you are not who you are. You. I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which is fucking great. Ah. Mm. That's I'm right. sorry. I'm just I'm just That's so excited. Right. So next <laughs> is whenever the. Oh, my God. You all right there, bud? I want it to be both. I, I, It can't be, but I want it to be both he is the same person, but he's also a different person. It, it could be. be it could be that they his personality has split apart somehow but because, during the film. But because of, of this scene. So after he talks on the phone and he's like, you can't call back here anymore, He the actor goes to the wife. He's like, I took care of it. Don't worry about it. But then the actor goes online and looks him up. So they're both mm-hmm. kind of looking each other up. So the actor goes, looks yes. him up, and then the wife comes into that room later after the actor goes to sleep, sees what he was looking up. She goes to the fucking school the next day because she can and sees the history teacher who the actor has been looking up yes. and has a fucking breakdown right next to him on a bench. Yeah. And Jake Gyllenhaal, the, the history teacher, just looks at her, smiles, like, how are you doing? And then she's just, like, having a nightmare inside. Yeah. You can see the terror on her face. She's it's just like, fucking are, great. are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, my God. So fucking insane. He's, like, asking her how many months pregnant but, she is and like, stuff. At, at first, I'm like, this feels unrealistic. Like, why is she doing this? But then I'm like, what happens if I were to go find Michelle? Like, Michelle's double sitting down on a bench somewhere. That I didn't know about, and I just I, mm-hmm. I, I I don't I feel like I'd be the same way. Like I would freak the fuck out. Yes, Dan. What happens if I were on a bench? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, I completely agree. It would be. It, I love the premise of this movie. It's fucking great. Um, it, I just I don't know why I was kind of. The film. I, I think it's because I was so like, what the fuck is going on? A okay, lot of yeah. time. the film is severely. But that slow. shouldn't. Yeah, and it, you have to be ready to watch a severely slow movie, but at the same time, I let myself, I released myself to the tension each time, and it did such a good job of building tension so early on that I was just like, uh-huh. I was by the end of the film, I was, and I don't say this often, I was literally on the edge of my seat, like I was like at full attention, just like staring at the TV, like mounting a fucking invisible horse that's almost on my couch. <laughs> Like, it, it was ridiculous. Well, here's here's what I liked about the movie is that my mind was running so yes. wild while watching yes, this. Yes, me too. That the possibilities of what could be going on were endless. There were so many things. And I, I got really fixated on the weird sex club thing. And I thought there was something even more to, hey, Jared, to, to that than what I had just said. Did you said. know that I got really um, weirdly fixated on that as well? Even though it only shows up maybe three times to be to be, to be be fair to it. I think it's two, but it. I think it's. I think it's two. I think it was so. Twice. So what's that <clears throat> second time? Because the second one is much shorter than the first time, but it's probably one of the most amazing scenes in the film. I can't remember. Um, there's a long dark hallway. Oh, that that's a fucking amazing it's scene. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> Where ah! there's this figure it's like upside down. Yeah, right? there's this figure upside down walking towards the camera, and it's blurry, and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" And as it gets closer, you see. It comes into focus, and it's a naked woman walking upside down on the ceiling or on the floor, which is filmed upside down, towards the camera. And as that naked body comes into focus and gets closer to um, Jake Gyllenhaal, who's walking on the actual floor, they kind of pass and, like, look at each other. And the fucking woman has an insect face. Yeah. But it, she's butt naked. Face. Is it is a spider's yeah. face? I think it's supposed oh to be. Like, everything is a spider. It's. Yeah. So horrifying. What's amazing about this scene, which I think they played off as like a dream, is as a man, when you see a naked lady mm-hmm. walking upside down in a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. You wait, tend wait, to wait. not be looking at her face. Right. 
That's not the first thing I'm looking at. (laughs) So it's actually a trap in and of itself. And that's literally the whole point of the film of like this infidelity or whatever that he's doing. He's not even recognizing these women as like people, really. And then you look at her face and you're like, ah, she's a fucking spider. Now, I, so I was looking at her like, all right, all right. What the okay, fuck? Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I like that <laughs> argument a lot, Jared. But I feel, so the I movie feel like we me. need to break it down a little bit more because you and I okay. have a difference of opinion here. While I agree right. with the fact that the first thing that you're going to be looking at is not her face, um, yes. your mind, I don't believe, is in the correct place. Because if I see a woman who is butt naked walking towards me, um, down the hallway on the ceiling. I'm not going to be looking at her naked body. I'm going to be looking at the fact that she's on the fucking ceiling. <laughs> well, I got over that immediately. I was like, this is, I thought it was just one of those artistic shots. I didn't realize she was really on the ceiling. You know what I mean? I thought it was like, oh, they're just doing some artsy fartsy bullshit with the camera right now. And they're going to flip the camera around and we're going to get to actually what's happening. Nope. <laughs> she well, is okay, on the so if you, if you appreciate the shot as a whole, she starts on the ceiling, and I, I feel like what really sets it apart from what you're talking, and this is an opinion, so your your opinion is just fine. I, I get it. But for Rude. me, why I couldn't – why I didn't think the camera was going to move over is because it was already strange to begin with because she was out of focus and so far away. And it's all one shot, and you're watching it, mm-hmm. and it's all one t- – excuse me, one take. It's all one take, and as she comes, they they pass – yeah. And they walk eyes for a minute. So I guess I wasn't anticipating that that turn that you're thinking of. Maybe it was an artistic shot. I mean, it was an artistic shot, but I wasn't – I'd never thought it was going to correct itself essentially. I just thought mm-hmm. like this is fucking insane. What am I looking at right now? And as soon as I say that, he passes and I'm like, oh, I'm looking at what he's seeing. What the fuck? Yes. Yeah, and I didn't know that. I just thought it was a shot in the film. I, for some reason, I didn't think anything was weird about it. Well, anything that it has to do with that sex club. That yeah, weird. anything that has to do with that sex club is just, it's so bizarrely shot. Like, it's wow. almost something that doesn't exist. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's so surreal to me that I... That's what I'm saying. So, like, it's that, that thing is like the representation or the idea of cheating. Okay. That's what that is. Like, it might not even be a real place. Like, that, that envelope with the key in it is, like, temptation for him to go cheat on his wife. Well, then at that point, we can kind of break it down further, saying, like, you know, actor Jake Gyllenhaal has already been there, enjoys himself, contemplates while he's there. Because there's a lot of scenes where he's just, like, kind of staring off in a space with his with uh-huh. his hand in his, in his, like, cupped in his hands. Or his face cupped in his hands, excuse me. And yeah. um, that would – we would kind of be getting that – Okay, so if what you're saying is that that place is the the concept of cheating itself, we are mm-hmm. looking at it from the angle of the history teacher, the shy, the passive one, because yes. cheating is that extreme to him that it's it's equated to this weird fucking snuff house brothel. Uh huh. So what's super weird too is like, so if the actor is the person that does the cheating and he's trying not to cheat anymore. And if you think of it this way of like, well, maybe if they're the same person, then the teacher version of him is him supposed to be like being good. Like him just trying to be a family man. And the, and the man that uh, the actor's wife, the pregnant woman wants to, to stay around. You're like, okay, that makes sense. But also the teacher has been having sex with that lady at that weird apartment. And that is him cheating. So it's like both versions of him are cheating Mm -hmm. on his wife. (laughs) So even the good version that she's like, I want this version to stay because I like you better than the other version. Even he is cheating on his wife. Really? If you think about it, it's super confusing. I don't know. But again, Uh, it's supposed to be confusing. Like, again, the ambiguity is final. Um, (laughs) So we have a lot of scenes where the doubles are meeting. And, oh, okay. The double meeting. Yeah. Yeah. AKA the scene. Double make gum. No, no. Let's not make a joke about this because let's, let's take it for what it is. <laughs> this is a super serious this podcast. Is a super serious podcast with a super serious movie about a super serious scene that involves Jake Gyllenhaal being in a hotel room 
and also opening the door and slowly sliding his face in creepily. That was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I'm taking that still as the episode art because it made me laugh so hard. It's so good. Oh. What's um what's weird about this this movie too is like how they treat them being doubles. Mm-hmm. So I think if I met someone who looked and sounded exactly like me, right. I wouldn't want to hide it so much. Do you know what I mean? Right. I'd be like, this is fucking amazing. Like Well, we made a podcast. Let's about explore it. this yeah. more with other people. Yeah, and that's what we did. We made a podcast and we high five each other every week. <laughs> with our penises. But these fuckers do it secretly like they're cheating. They do it oh, like... Oh, shit. That's it's, a good that's It's a an good infidelity. Point, yeah. So to this actually is like, we're going to meet at a hotel, and I'm not going to tell my wife. See what I mean? It's like, why and then the, are you then, doing okay, this so way? This is, in, this is the moment in the film, like I, I think I said it before, where like all hell breaks loose, and um, actor Jake Gyllenhaal becomes super aggressive to... It, like, it just... He doesn't even become aggressive. Just the, his demeanor changes where he's like no longer happy-go-lucky and no longer uh, leave me the fuck alone. I am now going to get c- uncomfortably close to you to a point where uh, you want to leave the room. Yeah. Which that was so well done. It was incredible. Oh, yeah. And just before that, he is rehearsing what he's going to say mm-hmm. to the teacher, which I thought was weird, too. Like, <laughs> he is like... It's like a it's like a scene he's planning out. It was so bizarre. And then he goes and does it with the teacher and tells him exactly what he was rehearsed and he's like I'm going to sleep with your wife or I'm going to pretend to be or sleep with your girlfriend and pretend to be you blah 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 and then after that then you you're going to get out of my life forever. And I I didn't understand the blackmail. I think it, it was better explained in the novel mm-hmm. what the blackmail was about. Um the blackmail maybe if you're reading into my theory it could be that like you're going to let me do this because I know we're the same person. And if you don't, I'm going to tell our wife that you've been cheating on her again. So it's like, now let me have sex with this lady or whatever. So I, that makes more sense to mm-hmm. me. But without that context, you're just like, I don't get why the teacher is going to let this dude do this. I don't understand why. Um, well, I just took it because he was too, so timid. And he was just so freaked out by everything. He just wanted him to like. Uh, yeah, he would just yeah, do anything to timid. get it, just get it away. Like it's fucking yeah, spider. It's like true. just take it out of my fucking face. It's gross. But when he says I'll call the police, and he's like, and tell them what? Then you're kind of like, tell them that there's. I mean, it's a little weird, but he can still call the police unless they're the same person, I guess. So I don't know. Um, the the other, the thing that is confusing also is. Them being at two different places at the same time, which, again, makes me think that, like, some of that stuff just has to be not real. Because throughout the entire film, okay, well, like, how does the wife not know that her husband is a teacher? Does Do you think that the wife thinks that the actor is a professional actor and it's just – because they live in a rich house. Like, they have a really nice place. Mm-hmm. So, like, who's paying for that? Because in this film, the teacher or the, the actor or whatever is only doing very small roles. Yeah. He's only been in like three or four movies. It's like barely above an extra. Well, see, He's like a bellboy what, or whatever. What, what I was thinking. Where's the money coming from? My idea of where the money was coming from was maybe he is the one who's in charge of that weird warehouse. And he's getting bankrolled to run it by all the rich gentlemen who go there. Oh, that's what I think yeah. was happening, but I don't know. Weird. So he's got that underground weird enterprise yeah. thing. That could be it because the, the other explanation is that he's going to work as a teacher and making the money to keep that house. But then he also owns that shitty apartment that he sneaks off to. And you're like, what is going on? And the mom, we haven't even talked about the mom. So played by Isabel Rossellini of blue velvet fame. Yes. So, okay. Everybody in this movie does a great job. The movie is well shot and well acted. Everything about that is fantastic. There's no issue with any of that. I'll just say that because I haven't said it already. It's just well shot. Everything about it is pretty great. Um, So, anyways, with this mom, in the beginning of the film, she says different things that sound like it could be applied to both characters. And 
she she goes she talks about how like uh, I love your new place. You know, like your apartment's really nice. Blah blah blah. And then and then later on she starts talking about like 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 why are you living in this dirty shack or whatever? Like your house. And then is like, also you know, like, we need to talk she about mentions this. like. Get rid of your dreams of being an actor. Like, I don't understand why you want to do that, which is being in three bit yes. parts. Which, the more, God, this, what's beautiful, and I keep saying it, the ambiguity <laughs> of this film is fucking yeah. gorgeous. Because yeah, yeah, it's really everything good. points to both options being true. Yeah. So they're both the same person, but they're both two different people. Like there's so many clues for both of those to make sense. And the film yeah. doesn't let you see like anytime that you are trying to figure it out, the film throws a giant spider on screen. You have to look at that for about five seconds. I, I, I agree. But I also think there are certain things where it, it's just for them to do these clues, like with the photo and certain other things. Uh, there's a thing with blueberries where um, <laughs> the actor comes home and he starts ranting at his wife about how he needs blueberries in the, the fridge organic kind. for his for his smoothies. <laughs> and you're like, why is this an important scene? I was like trying to tune it out. And then later well, on. No, 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 no. Don't don't you you aren't you aren't properly addressing that scene. Because this is directly right, after fine. this is directly what? after she sees the guy at the, the work. At the at the oh, history yeah, teacher yeah. and it's it, Jake Gyllenhaal. He's ranting, but he's in the background and not in focus. And the whole time, the camera's oh. focusing on her horrified face, still trying to decipher what had happened at that school that she went mm. to. What's weird is like, okay, if he has two different lives, one where he has a car, the other where he rides a motorcycle. How does he keep that shit separate? And how far away do they live from each more other? More evidence like, to the contrary that he is in fact two different people. Yeah, exactly, exactly, so, because it's like, is he taking cabs and blanking and all that out in his mind, and then he gets to a certain spot and then pretends to run for a while? He's like, hey, I'm back from my jog that took all day. <laughs> I definitely wasn't at school being a teacher. It's so bizarre. And um, so, okay, so they, do, they talk about blueberries, and then the actor goes – or no, I'm sorry. The teacher goes to see his mom mm -hmm. and, and tells her everything about the actor and this guy who's who's – Literally his double. And and her, uh, while they're speaking about it, she says like, hey, do you want me to get you some blueberries or whatever? And he's like, no, I don't like blueberries. <laughs> he's like, I thought you loved blueberries. I'm, I'm getting, probably getting it a little wrong. Right. But, uh, she, for some reason, the mom thinks that her son likes blueberries and he doesn't. And it, they had just had a scene about the other character liking blueberries. I'm like, holy shit. And then when he confesses to her about this other person who could be her double – what she says, like Dan said, could be con construed as, I want you to forget about this other person uh, and, and don't worry about it at all because it's nonsense. Or I'm literally talking about your movie career because that's what you're trying to talk about. And I want you to forget about that mm. because you need to live in the real world and take care of your family and be a boring ass teacher. And so it's like, it could be both. So it's kind of neat. But Dan, you're wrong. You're actually wrong. Oh, thank you. I'm and glad. I'm, right. I'm glad. All my opinions I'm glad. are glad. I'm glad I'm wrong. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Woo! Uh, okay, Dan, do you have any other uh, closing little things you want to talk about before we... No, I, I guess we can just wrap up with final thoughts right now about the film specifically. And then you sure. can go into what yeah. your assignment is. Um, yeah. The more I'm thinking about it, because I'm listening to myself talk, I'm listening to you talk, it's almost like actor Hall is representation of his id so like his primal uh -huh. instincts like what he really wants to do and yeah the teacher is his super ego so all the guilt he experiences because he's sleeping around because oh yeah, yeah. so absolutely but then at that point if i break them into id and super ego what is the ego i'm not quite seeing that it's almost like th maybe maybe this movie is the ego and we're kind of us as an audience is experiencing what he is experiencing in this split where it's like my insane side wants to do everything that this wants to do. And then my mm -hmm. ego side, the one where I think a lot is all about the guilt I experience. And it's just this weird roller coaster that is. So the only way that would make sense is if 
the teacher, Jake Gyllenhaal, kind of teeters the line between ego and super ego, but he's he still has to be the super ego, like a physical manifestation of guilt, essentially, is what my theory is. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, it's interesting. Uh, and I guess you're just you're never really supposed to know. No, you're not. <laughs> Apparently, the the actors were made to sign a non disclosure agreement to never talk about the spiders, and that's fine. To not explain the spiders. I'm totally okay with that. They scared the so shit out of me. So when they were asked in interviews, they're like, "We don't, we can't tell you. We don't know." The very last spider scared the <laughs> fuck out of me. Like it was crazy. Oh yeah, I did not expect that. That was fucking terrifying. I was like, and Jesus then the spider Christ. was scared of you. It like backed up in the corner. Yes. And and then the I fucking jumped because I was afraid of a scared spider. Like it, oh my god. Yeah. And that's the fear. That's I guess that's the uh, like I said. I think it's all part of that weird infidelity thing. So okay. Uh, yeah, my final impressions. I I thought this movie was good. It's not my favorite. Um, I don't think I'd ever watch it again. Oh, I would watch it again for sure. Um, but I feel like it's, it's definitely well made, and it's it's worth it's worth seeing. Yeah, I'm very middle of the road. I feel movie. like if I watch this film five more times, it would end up in my top ten. Like uh, really, I maybe one more time. Like now, knowing more. Well, yeah, no, one more time would definitely help. One more time would definitely help. But I'm saying, like, really sit down with it because it's not just about trying to figure it out. It's also about the just just sitting down and experiencing the movie as an affectation. Essentially, it's like it is making me. It, it's bringing me down. Like this, this uh-huh. film was. You know, I watched it Sunday morning before I went to band practice. And band practice is always like, you know, it's fun because we play music, but it's also like silly because we shoot the shit and we make silly, stupid jokes. I was unable Mm -hmm. to make silly, stupid jokes. And I was a total (laughs) downer because I watched this film prior to going. Like, it it, it ruined my day. It does what it is accomplishing. Like, it, it sets out to make you feel a certain way, and you do feel that way. It's wonderful. And what's interesting is I think. Uh, uh, a woman watching this movie would have a totally different experience. Very quickly, I want to talk about the novel. So in the novel, in the book, it is definitely two different people. Um, and there's no fucking spiders at all. And when the, the two people meet, they make a joke about this in the film. Like one of the characters is like, did you guys take each other's clothes off and like <laughs> be in the room naked? And maybe the mom, I don't know. I forget who says that. But that actually happens in the novel where they meet up and they, like, remove all their clothes to study the scars and everything else. They're like, yeah, we have all the same moles and scars and everything. So I thought that was fun. And um, the car accident thing happens. All that happens. The blackmail happens. But then after, the teacher replaces the actor. And the wife is like, I want you to be the new husband. Baby daddy. He's like, okay. Right. That's going on. And the movie doesn't end. The, the, uh, the character doesn't go and cheat on his wife again or whatever. He gets another phone call later on, like weeks later, from another man who's like, oh, Ooh. thank God I, I got a hold of you. And he's like, I think me and you are like the same person. Oh, so it's like so a... he gets a, a call from a third person who's like, we are so similar. We have to meet. I don't understand what's going on. So now he is the other person. It's like flipped. And the dude is like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to go meet. Like, come meet me at this park or whatever. And basically, he brings a gun to go kill him. And that's so that's the that's the that's, last scene. That's this, it's leaving room for the sequel, The Triple, in which <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal, like, spit roasts a fucking spider. No. <laughs> He's going to kill the other. It's like any other doppelganger that shows up now, he has to kill them to keep his life intact. Right. I don't know. Or it's fucking fuck nuts. their spiders. Did you think? Did you think that the weird sex club had something to do with the doubles? Like there was some weird experimentation or like at one point I thought on. there was because this film did give me a lot of eyes wide shut vibes. Yeah, it's like I wanted, and then when that didn't happen, I think that's what upset me about the film. Oh. But I shouldn't be that upset about it because <laughs> that's not fair to the movie. I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's a good movie. I-, I think people should go see it. Um. So let's get into the film I want to assign. Dan? Please do. Danny? Jerry? Bear? This this movie we're going to watch. Oh, boy. Is it on Netflix? Where is it? Where do I go? I'm not sure. I think it's on Hulu. Ooh. I, I kept seeing it. I believe it's on Hulu. So I'll go on IMDb. How about that? Every time I see it, I would just yell, like, I have to assign this. 
What is the name and of I this movie? Forgetting. It's 2017's Mom and Dad. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, yes! That's right. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, it's on Hulu, I remember. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I can't wait. A teenage girl and her little brother must survive a wild 24 hours, during which a mass hysteria of unknown origins causes parents to turn violently on their own kids. They fucking start star? to murder yes. their own kids. Nick Cage Who does goes all fucking star? praying mantis and like tries to eat his children. Oh. If you look at the cover of the film, where it says mom and dad, and in the words are different scenes from the film, the, the, the second D on the end is a picture of Nick Cage's face. It's wonderful. That is amazing. Yes. He's like gritting his teeth like a crazy person. I can't wait to see. It, Nick I've Cage been wanting to watch kids. this since it came out last year. I've been wanting to watch this since I heard that Nick Cage is going to kill his kids. Oh yeah. Well, duh. <laughs> IMDb <laughs> gives it a shitty little five and a half star rating. Boy, I don't give a shit. This is going to be. I the don't best. care. Brian Taylor. I'm going to love every director. moment of it. Hmm. Oh. So yeah, that's the movie. Oh, we're watch. he did Gamer. Gamer was. Oh, that movie was yeah, actually kind of weird. And he, oh, oh, holy shit! Crank, crank and crank, crank high, high voltage, voltage and Ghost dude. Rider. Oh my god! Oh, so Brian this Taylor is one of the few di- few directors that I have seen every single one of his movies. Well, guys, I hope this is something. Um, I uh, I have to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please find us where you're gonna find us, Dan. Um, you have the final word, Jared. I have the final word, and it involves fucking a spinneret. I can't let go of the fact that I wanted Jake Gyllenhaal to fuck all those spiders. I really can't. Mm. <laughs> Danny, can I just say one thing? I know it's your final yeah. word. You're my daddy long legs. Oh, boy. And you are my pregnant spider wife. 